Social networking sites like Facebook and new technology like iPhones are all breaking new ground in the 2010 election, making it different from all those that have gone before. Let's speak to Alberto Nardelli, co-founder of Tweetminster, a new political monitoring website service. Alberto, good morning. Good morning. How are you? All right, thanks. See what you've done with the name there, Tweetminster. That's good. Dan, are you aware of this? Yeah, yeah, certainly. It's great. It's a great site. With me in the studio is, is Dan Wilson, who's a social media consultant and uh, one of the early setters up of eBay in this country as well. So what's, what's the aim of Tweetminster, Alberto? Well, our aim is really simple. We're trying to make politics more open and social. So we really want to improve the way people can connect with politicians directly and ac access a wide range of news sources and comments as openly as, as simply as possible. So if we went to Tweetminster, what's the website address for it? Tweetminster.co.uk. Straightforward enough. And when we get there, what will we see? Well, right now we recently launched our election page. We have several things. So there's a tool where you can enter your constituency or your postcode, and it tells you if your MP or candidate uh, are on Twitter. There's a tool to search through tweets about the issues that you care about, so you can see what politicians have said about those issues over the past uh, months. There's a tool which maps and shows where the various candidates are campaigning and where the parties are campaigning most. And finally, we're running a little experiment to see if mentions and popularity on Twitter will match the final election results. And we're launching more stuff this week and next week as the election gets closer. Dan, you've had a look at this. What do you make of Tweetminster? I think it's great fun. I mean, I think the to sort of use a local example down here in Brighton Pavilion, which is the constituency we're sat in, all our major candidates are on Twitter. So that means that we can follow the Tory, the Green, the Labour candidate and get a bit closer to them. So I think it, I think it is in, I think it's an interesting idea. So a as uh, consumers, as voters, if we're not looking at all these tweets, these 140 um, t uh, item... Character. Character, thank you, 140 character messages, are we out of the loop? Are we behind the curve here? I don't think you're, you're out of the loop. It's not, not compulsory, is it? No. Um, it's, it, I mean, the question is how much you genuinely learn from, from, from Twitter. Is it just broadcast material, the same old party nonsense? Is it new? Do we learn something? I think sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. But I, I venture by May 6th, we're all going to be absolutely bored rigid with this general election. It's, it's, day, it's day three and I'm not exactly enamoured with it. Um, uh, do, do Brown, Cameron and Clegg do their own tweets? Do they write their own? I don't know well, if they do their own. You might be better to Alberto? answer that, Alberto. Well, of the three, the, 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 the only party leader who is on Twitter is Nick Clegg. And I know he writes some of his own tweets while the more uh, generic stuff is sent out by the party. The other uh, leaders tend to speak through the party accounts or other members of their party. And don't forget, Gordon Brown's missus is on there as well, and she's, she's quite exciting. Uh, however, She's though, the campaign very closely. Yeah. However, though, you know, we've got for the first time this year three head-to-head -head between the leaders debates on TV starting next Thursday, and for the three, uh, you know, for three consecutive Thursdays, you know, more people are going to see what they're about on those than you know will read their tweets, and, and they'll be able to say much more. We'll be able to sort of see the whites of their eyes. That will surely have more of a sway than all their tweets put together, won't it, Alberto? Um, I think absolutely. I think the TV debates will be a very, very important milestone towards May the 6th. I think what's important to say, though, is that what happens on Twitter doesn't stay on Twitter. Lots of people will talk about the TV debates on Twitter, voters, commentators, news sources, journalists, and the perception that that the Twitter sphere, let's call it, will have on the TV debate will impact how the media will report uh, the debates and consequently that will impact how people read about and perceive the debates themselves. So it's, it's a very fluid process. It's not lots of silos working by themselves. One of the earliest things in the campaign was on Tuesday, you know, the day that uh, the Prime Minister went to Buckingham Palace and then declared the election w was going to be on May the 6th, um, was uh, David Cameron was on the other side of the Thames making his speech outside County Hall and he missed two words from the previously written text, straight or gay, and that was straight on Twitter. And, and we picked that up here at the BBC quite quickly, Alberto. No, absolutely, and, and that is a perfect example. It allows journalists to see what members of the pu how members of the public are perceiving what's happening uh, during the campaign, and they can use that perception, they can use the perspectives of people on Twitter to complement their stories, and again, that will impact how people then perceive the various parties and leaders. Um, Dan, uh, Facebook, you know, well connected with, well, all sort of age groups, really, but particularly the young. Do you think this is a, a, a real... 
uh, chance of getting through to young voters to encourage them to actually get out and go go and vote. You've actually got to leave your house to go and vote in a little porter cabin, you know, 100 yards from your house on May the 6th. Is it strong enough to make that happen? Well, I hope so. I mean, anything, surely, that, that tries to get more people to register to vote and then to vote has got to be worthwhile. I think Facebook, what is it? I think 23 million members. That's a, that's a massive audience. That's more than people that watch Doctor Who, if such a thing were possible. Yes, it uh, is. <laughs> Apparently so it is, yeah. Um, so, yeah, absolutely right. But, I mean, I think what we, we also need to think is that how, once people are registered to vote, how do we then encourage people to get excited, get involved, really go out and, and feel connected? I think the Twitter thing's part of that, but I'd like to see the political parties really engaging on Facebook. What do you say to that, Alberto? I absolutely agree. I think any initiative which encourages people to vote is is very much welcome. And I'm sure that the um, Facebook and Electoral Commission uh, project will have some sort of impact on getting people to vote. But I absolutely agree that the key beyond getting people there is inspiring them to want to be involved in politics and, and, and really feel their uh, vote counts. This week, for example, there was a digital economy bill vote, and people really felt excluded from that, 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 that there wasn't a debate around it. And I think the only people that can change that are the political parties and the candidates who need to be more inspiring and more engaging. That's, that's the one thing that can really boost um, the number of voters here's beyond th the different tools that we use. Here's a thought about that. I wonder how much we've learned from the American experience ahead of their uh, most, recent, uh, most recent presidential election. And yes, they had all this uh, digital media around then, but at the end of the day, it was the excitement of Barack Obama who engaged all those people to go out and vote who didn't vote before. Yeah, I think that's absolutely, absolutely right. Um, this is still a doorstep and leaflets and posters election. I think the digital media side is interesting, it adds a new dimension, but it's still just a good old-fashioned election. We haven't seen that transformation that we saw in America. I is that, Alberta, because we don't have a candidate who uh, grabs our imagination, who really gets us fired up that the Americans had? I think Barack Obama was the key variable in the U.S. election. Independently of the tools that you use, the candidate is the most important uh, element, and all the tools are, are secondary. And it's up to the candidates here to, to, to try and have that aspirational, inspirational message. And I think it's about being genuine and authentic. Obama was perceived as someone who genuinely wanted people to participate and shape the campaign and decisions. And that, I absolutely agree, that's, that's what's missing here, and that won't change independently of the tools that are used. Well, intriguing, uh, great idea you came up with. Where, where did you come up with the idea of Tweet Mints, uh, Alberta? Was it uh, in, in a pub one night? Uh, it was actually walking one morning. I saw a tweet by Tom Watson, uh, a member of parliament, who was talking about congressmen in the States using Twitter, and we just thought it would be great to have something similar here in the UK. Well, and we, we launched it the week after that. OK, well, great stuff. I, I've not seen it yet, so what I'm going to do this afternoon is a bit nice, so I won't be at my computer at my desk this afternoon. But this evening, once the sun goes down, I'll have a good old look. I'll have a look at uh, where I live, uh, up in the north of Brighton there, and uh, see what's going on. Alberto, thanks for your time today. Thank you very much. Excellent. Uh, Alberto Nardelli of Tweetminster, and that is, as he said, at tweetminster.co.uk.